second leg of our two-wheeled trio takes us to the Isle of Man, and the biting winds of a Cotswold march give way to the driving rain of a Manx June as the steamer docks at Douglas. For more than half a century, the island has been famous for sounds and sights like these. Over its roads, motorcycle history has been made, written by the immortal hands of Bennett, Handley, Woods, Simpson and Guthrie, Frith, Duke, and Surtees, and many more. But as the TT lovers leave, a fresh boatload of enthusiasts pour in for the second annual motor scooter rally, this year raised to international status. From everywhere they come, 200 of them, to receive a welcome from the home of motorcycle sport. A welcome no less warm for being wet as the rally parades down the Douglas Promenade. Scooters from Holland, Norway and Germany and every part of the British Isles join to face the rigors of an English summer. A tough and busy week lies ahead and scrutineers get down to work, checking machines for the 12 and 24 hour regularity test on the TT circuit just part of the week's full program. Some 50 hardy types, three girls amongst them, face the cameras and the Lord Mayor too for the start of the 24-hour event. The first man gets away, oil skins and Macintoshes replacing the leathers of the real racers. The 150s have to average 28.3 miles an hour, not much, you say, but enough for 24 hours of the mountain circuit. Round Quarter Bridge they go, as upright as a pub piano. But in far better tune. To Barragaroo and Kirk Michael, one of the three checkpoints. Where riders stop to have their cards officially stamped. If only we could find the rubber stamp. With 20 laps to cover, 755 miles for scooters over 200 cc, the riders press on, regardless of the beauties that abound in the Isle of Man. Despite the unfamiliar circuit and the small capacity of the machines, the number of retirements is notably few. Solos and sidecars, too, have proved their stamina in this searching, grueling test. And as the course winds upward to the mountain, the riders, too, prove just as tough as their machines as they drive through the treacherous island mist, which hides from view the landmarks on the way. The mountain box, the stonebreaker's hut, the veranda, and the bungalow. Down from the mountain they ride into clearer weather and the control point. Cards are stamped again. The scooters are checked. And refueled. Off they go again. as the Dennis Christian, Doug Crennel combination checks in. Well, that's one way to stop them talking. At 9 p.m. the 12-hour test begins, and Miss Aldridge gets a helping hand before she gets away into the failing light on her lambretta. Farewells are spoken, but a traveler like this thinks nothing of a night out on the mountain, and we think nothing of it either. And this chap crashes, goes to hospital, and returns again to start where he fell off. Miss Christian has a pit stop, and then heads off into the night. Headlamps blazing, the 90 runners in the 12 and 24 hour test run their appointed course. 
But the long night has to end, and slowly the sky gets lighter. And blondes get blonder, and the pits get busier, whilst minor adjustments are made. The German rider, Schwara, still smiling after losing his gears and two root cards, checks in after adding a few more miles to the 139,000 already on the clock. At last it's over. And here's one girl that isn't sorry. One by one they cross the line. Bjorn of the Thames Valley Vespa Club. Miss Aldridge of the Luton Lambretta Club. Hazel Christian of the Bristol Wasps. Miss Nevard too has made a night of it. Who said the girls can't take it? Still they come. No, it's round this way. With the finish, the sun comes out, as if in admiration of the great achievements of the scooters and their riders. Move along with you, please. Valley has its lighter side, and in this point to point, the local boy makes good. Knowing every bump on his hometown course, Manxman Dennis Christian races home to receive the checkered flag, the Douglas Corporation trophy, and five pounds as well. The tempo changes, and the flag falls on the slow race, and reluctantly the field gets going. Followed by the obstacle race. No wonder he bought a scooter. It's far quicker than going by tube. <laughs> Life is full of ups and downs in the plank race. Team events for sidecars as well as solos follow. Look out, anything in the cause of fashion. And the sack is the latest thing. But we think it's just about the bottom. But the team race is not over yet. They've got to change a plug, hand over the sash, pass the poles, and whilst Adam gets his lens adjusted, Eve has got the apple. Final event of the week-long rally is the Concorde d'Elegance. Round the ring they ride, showing off their paces and their faces. You can sleep through this. You can sleep through anything. And the scooter queen is Mrs. Steele. To prove she's quite a dear, there's a deer stalker just behind her. But band leader Ken McIntosh gets there first and helps her with her sash. So with pennants bravely flying, the second international motor scooter rally comes to an end. The party is over and the boats are waiting to take us back to the mainland. But there's always next year to look forward to.